A message from the Boeing Machinists Union. Boeing management is unfair, plain and simple. Frank Schrantz gets a $5 million bonus, which he doesn't share, while they force us to work in places like Renton and Everett. I mean, have you been to these places? Meanwhile, they live in Hunts Point and Medina with underground wiring and machines that shoot tennis balls. <laughs> Boeing management, fat pigs who won't share. A reply from Boeing management. What a bunch of whiners. Sure, Frank Schrantz got a $5 million bonus, but did you know the chairman of Airbus got $7 million? We've got to stay competitive in a global economy, and we're not even close. But of course, we wouldn't expect labor to understand that, because they're too busy striking. Boeing machinists, crybabies who like to strike. A further response from the Boeing Machinists Union. Crybabies? Just wait until one of those scabs forgets to put the wings on a new 777 and the whole thing falls apart. Then see who's crying. I mean, sure, we make $22 an hour while the average U.S. worker only makes $9, but at least we can read the damn blueprints. Boeing management. They want to build cheap airplanes that fall apart. A final message from Boeing management. Hey, machinists, you know what? We brought you into this company and we'll take you out. You're evil. Yeah, that's it. Boeing machinists, they're just plain evil. The absolute last word from the Boeing Machinists Union. Bite me. going nuts. I think basically the way I see it, if the crowd in the kingdom had yelled any louder, they would have retracted the roof. I mean, we wouldn't need, we wouldn't need a new stadium. It's Mariner Fever. It's uh, Mariner Fever. It's turned into Mariner Ebola. It's, you know, epidemic <laughs> proportions. It's unbelievable. I mean, there's, there's been a lot of news this week. Let's face it, you know, a lot of headlines, giant headlines getting bigger and bigger as we expect. The big excitement at this moment is over the Mariners. I mean, look at this picture they had at the Kingdom crowd in the paper today. Everybody ah, with their hands up. Everybody's going crazy, except for the one guy in the middle. Did you guys notice this? The one guy. I mean, who, look at this. What is this guy? Th look at this guy. What is he thinking, you know? I don't know. I left the gas on. You know, what is this guy? He said. He's a perfectionist. It's like a home run, yeah, but it could have gone high. It's like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, as crazy as everything got, you know, the team, as you said, they managed to stay loose, which is good. You know, you saw that they, between innings, they got together and they played London Bridge is falling down, which kept them together as a team. It's a good game, you know, kept them together as a team, you know, caught Cora. It's okay. Anyway, anyway, they, uh, tonight, although it sure, it, it, it was... Uh, you know, we won by a big, there was the big grand slam and everything, and so it seemed, oh, we put it, you know, we put it away, but then it got tense, you know, and it shouldn't, it really, you know, you, you follow me, it, it really shouldn't have been that tense, but, you know, Lou put Ayala in, and, and here, if, if I could just do my impression of Ayala pitching tonight. Okay, let me just see if I can do this. <laughs> That's okay, though. That was my impression. I do, yeah. yeah. All right, but anyway, anyway. Uh, there, yeah, thank you back there. That's right, there's a whole, 
whole different feeling to the games now that they've moved from Yankee Stadium to the Kingdom. For one thing, the Mariners are winning. But the other, the big difference also is the attitude of the crowd. Now let's face it, some pretty disgusting things happened in New York. And our own, our own Nancy Guppy has some observations on that. Nancy? Thanks, John. You know, those New York fans are dorks, okay? Let me, let me show you a list of what they threw onto the field. Golf balls, batteries, bottles, refrigerators, <laughs> spitting cobras, two of them. And Jay Beaner almost got hit by an engine block from a 68 Camaro. <laughs> Excuse me, I mean, it was ridiculous, okay? But here in Seattle, the fans are nice. Sure, we throw stuff onto the field, but we make sure it's nice stuff, or at least useful stuff. For example, as you know, last night, someone threw a coin onto the field, okay? This wasn't meant to hurt anyone. No, it was a, a gift for some player to go buy himself a little treat, like some gum or something. Okay, someone else, they threw a tomato. Now, this is a good start on a healthy salad. That's very, very thoughtful. Now, fans also threw, look at this, someone threw out a smoked salmon. The good kind. The good kind. Not that crap from Safeway, okay? And for those vegetarian outfielders, look at this. Someone threw out a 12-ounce box of applets and cutlets. Mm. Now, another thing that came flying out of the stands was a beaded car seat cover. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good for the back, and it's oh so stylish as well. And look at this. This is absolutely the creme de la creme. Someone threw out two tickets to the Seattle Rep. Okay? This is row, row H, seats eight and nine. These are damn good seats. Now, someone also threw down some Seahawks tickets, but they were thrown back. Okay. Now, finally, uh, one thing you'll never see thrown onto the field in Seattle is a bottle. Why? Because there's a chance it would not be recycled properly. <laughs> Way to go, Mariner fans! I think we all we all feel a little bit better about ourselves now. Thank you very much. Okay, there is one more game against the Yankees tomorrow, and you know what, I just have to say this. I believe they basically, the Mariners have to win that game because it's not fair if they don't. It's not fair to take it that far and then lose because it would be like, well, it would be like that first heavy date you had in high school when you're like, you know, 16 years old and everything moves kind of slow. You're nervous. You have dinner. You go to the movies and hold hands for a couple hours. You really don't think anything is really going to happen. And then, what do you know? You're back at your house. And just as everything starts to heat up, you can't believe it, you hear your parents in the driveway, okay? <laughs> Now, if they lose tomorrow, I, the whole city is going to feel that pain, that pain, you know, that you get when that has that pain. It's just that so close. Oh, I went through it in high school. Don't make me relive it. Ooh, ow. That's just a personal plea from me. Anyway, the audiences for the televised games also, I don't have to tell you, have been huge. They've been enormous. And I know that there is a lot of you still watching. So at this time, I'm proud to welcome back a very special sponsor to Almost Live. Take a look. Last year, Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium was forced to close our doors forever. We lost our lease. Well, guess what? We found it. <laughs> Announcing Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium's big, huge, grand reopening. This is our first and last reopening. We're never going to reopen again because we're never going to close again. Don't wait for it to happen because it's not going to. Chances of that are zero, zilch, nil, not. Forget about it. Drop it. Get it out of your head. If Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium ever did go out of business again, which we won't, it would be the biggest sale in our history. Everything would go right to the walls with prices slashed throughout the store. But stop thinking that way because we're not going to leave again because Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium's big, huge, grand reopening is underway today, right away, without delay, easy pay, step this way, what do you say? Hey, hey, hey! And this is the time to save like you've never saved before. More than you ever hoped of saving, ever dreamed of saving, more than your parents ever dreamed of saving, your grandparents, their parents, more than anybody anywhere has ever saved since the dawn of man, guaranteed with your coupon. Now and now only during Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium's big, huge, grand reopening. And we've got nothing but rugs. Big rugs, small rugs, square rugs, round rugs, angular, rectangular, triangular, quadrangular, pentagonal, hexagonal, hexahedral, rugs and only rugs. 
We don't have furniture. We don't have household appliances, car stereos, big screen TVs, pianos and organs, RVs and fifth wheelers, spas and hot tubs. And we don't sell cigarettes, liquor, veal, furs, ivory, hides, teeth, blubber, or hard drugs of any kind. Only rugs and 20 of them. So what are you looking at? Get off your fat ass and get down here. Don't miss this one. Miss anything else. Miss your bus. Miss your period. Miss your wedding. Your kid's birth. Your mom's funeral. But don't miss this. Your mom sure wouldn't have the one and only big, huge, grand reopening of Roscoe's Oriental Rug Emporium. We're back. We're here to stay. But hurry, because you never know. We've got a great show, and we'll be right back. And now, the game show that asks the question that's on everybody's mind. Is it Pike or Pine? And now, welcome your host, Skip Town. Hello and welcome to Pike or Pine, Seattle's longest running game show where our contestants try to answer Seattle's toughest question. Is it on Pike or Pine? <laughs> the first contestant to get five correct answers is the winner. And as you know, we have been waiting for over three years for a winner, but maybe tonight. So let's say hello to our first contestant, longtime Seattle resident and Starbucks employee, Dave Thompson. Dave, welcome to Pike or Pine. Thanks. Here's the first question. Okay, that really good Thai restaurant near Broadway, is that on Pike oh. or Pine? Oh, I know that one. I know that one. You it's know what um, I mean? Oh, yes, 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 exactly. Is that on oh. Pike or Pine? Oh, God, I can see it. Um, uh, it's, it's either Pike or Pine. Right, that's the point of the game, yeah, Dave. Is um, it Pike oh, or Pine? Oh, God. Come on. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Time is up. We've got to move to the next contestant. Sorry, Dave. Hello. Next contestant. Welcome. Longtime Seattle resident and Ivor's counterperson, Carrie Davis. Hi. Carrie, here's your question. Okay, you're on Capitol Hill heading downtown. Now, which street do you take to go straight down? Not the one that, you know, that gets all weird and goes into the convention oh, center and yeah, turns. Yeah, you know, which one yeah, goes no, straight down? I know down? that because it's on, it's either on Pike or Pine. Um, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, no, no, okay. If you're facing Seattle, uh -huh. um, it's uh, the one closest to the Space Needle. Okay, is that Pike or Pine? Um, it's the north one. It's the one that's farthest north. Okay, I need a street name, Carrie. Oh, Pike or Pine? Oh, oh, Pine? It is fine. Good. One correct answer. All right. The next question. The gap. Pine. Is it on? Yes, the gap is on pine. Very good. Two correct answers. All right. And now, what is the best street to take into the Pike Place Market? Pike. Oh, no. Good guess. But the answer is pine. Actually, the, you know, that intersection at Pike is always kind of messed up, and it's, it's one way going the wrong oh, way. Oh, hell. All right. Sorry. <laughs> now, let's welcome longtime Seattle resident and avid boater, Lars Olson. Now, Lars. <laughs> REI, the co-op, is that on Pike or Pine? Oh yeah, that is, it's up there on uh, 12th. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> now Lars, that, that's right, that's the right cross street, but is that Pike or Pine? Oh, it's, it's one of those. Uh, just take either one up to 12th and you can't miss it. Okay. <laughs> Lars, have you been paying attention at all? Well, that's where it is. <laughs> Goodbye, Lars. It, it's right on 12th. Okay, now welcome longtime Seattle resident and Boeing engineer Mendel Hanford. Oh, Mendel? Skip. Ross Dress for Less. Is it on Pike? Ah, yes, correct. All right. All right. The Paramount Theater. Pine. Yes, that is correct. Oh, that's that's great, Mendel. Looks like you brought your own cheering section. Uh, yeah, some of the guys from work came down here and cheer uh, me on. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's great. That's great, guys. Okay, your next question. The gay and lesbian bookstore out of the closet. Uh, Pike. Okay, that's right. It is Pike. I mean, I think it might be Pike. What, what do you mean? Well, I was just guessing it's Pike. It's just, okay, it's just all right. a guess. Okay, well, you guessed right because it was on Pike. All right, you've got three correct answers. All right, now this one. Sin, the bondage boutique. Sin, is it on Pike or Pine? Pine. All right, very good. 
I, I mean, I, again, uh, you know, it seems like the answer had been pike quite a bit, so I figured it'd be time for pine. That's, I was just guessing again. Uh, okay, all right. Stab in the dark. Okay, one more question, Mendel, and this is for the big win. Okay, Neighbors, Seattle's premier gay disco. Is it on pike or pine? It's on, uh, I don't know. Oh, come on. For the championship, Mendel, come on, pike or pine, just make a guess. I said I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, we're out of time with no winner again. Maybe next week, tune in to see on Pike or Pine. Good evening. This is The Late Report. Well, a polar bear cub discovered under a house in Alaska will go to Tacoma's Point Defiance Zoo. First, however, the cub will spend six months at Tacoma's B&I store being poked at by crabby middle-aged people. Well, restaurateur Stuart Anderson will be the guest of honor at a celebration of Western art this weekend at the Taiyi Hotel in Olympia. Anderson, an avid collector, plans to display several of his rarest and most valuable pieces all with a choice of soup, salad, or baked potato. <laughs> the newly expanded Children's Museum includes a talking toilet that tells children to wash their hands after going to the bathroom. After a few embarrassing moments this first weekend, museum officials are planning to change the message to be sure to wash your hands in the sink after going <laughs> to the bathroom. Well, O.J. Simpson has vowed to spend the rest of his life searching for the real killer of Nicole Simpson and Ronald Goldman. Based on newly acquired evidence, police have come up with a sketch of the current suspect and are currently searching for this man. <laughs> right, we wish them well. A group of Seattle architects is pushing for an open-air stadium north of the kingdom. The Mariners say that if the stadium doesn't have a retractable roof, they want it east of the kingdom, somewhere in Virginia or Florida. <laughs> well, branding body parts with red-hot steel is gaining popularity in the Seattle area. Other popular fads including poking steel dowels through your brain and chewing off your own feet. <laughs> A Vancouver, Washington man has been charged with placing cleaning fluid in root beer so he could sue Henry Weinhardt's. Weinhardt officials said that they were very worried because the new concoction tasted just like Zima. <laughs> well, Mariner fever is in the air, and as many of you folks out there know, baseball announcers all have their catchphrases, or what they call their home run call. For example, you've heard Dave Niehaus say, it will fly, fly away, and my, oh my. Well, the man responsible for those catchphrases is here with us today. His name is Ethan Atkins, and he is known as the king of catchphrases. Thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, you're Atkins. welcome. Now, somebody told me that actually you are, are responsible for Dave Niehaus's my, oh my, is that right? Well, actually, I came up with, oh my, oh. He oh. just uh, switched it around and got out of paying me royalties. I see. Now, do you have uh, some other phrases that you're working on that you could tell us about? As a matter of fact, I do. Mm -hmm. All right, here's one. That ball could be a nice souvenir, or it could kill someone. <laughs> or how about, strike three. Just kidding. <laughs> Here's one for the 30-something uh, crowd. Okay. My name is Luca, and that ball lives on the second level. Uh -huh. Or, uh -huh. what a powerful bunt. Uh -huh. And, the fat lady has swung. <laughs> and, ooh. Now, I'm sorry, what, what was that one again? Ooh. So you wrote that. It's hard to believe that no one has uh, actually thought of that on their own. That's right, it's mine. <clears throat> oh, okay. Now, this is the first one I ever came up with. The ball has been hit, and it's a home run. <laughs> All right, here's one. Grab your bathing suits, kids, because we're going swimming. I don't quite get that one. Ah, this one's for the kids now. Ground control to Major Tom, commencing countdown. <laughs> that ball is gone. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, I also like, that pitcher sucks. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we've got time for just one more, All right, please. All one right. more. All right, All right, this is my personal favorite. So long, farewell, I'll be to saying goodbye, adieu, adieu. Okay, you, Ethan you, Atkins, you. the king of catchphrases. Dun, 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 Ethan, the interview's dun, dun, over dun, now. The family Put a sock in it! Uh, well, 
Finally, Microsoft is preparing a facelift for their Bob program in hopes of increasing sales. In order to ensure this, they will be re-releasing the program under the new name, Microsoft Brad. This has been The Late Report. We're coming right back, so stay where you are. Felicity, you're such a cool goth chick and your clothes are so black. All the guys in the coffee shop are always looking at you. Yeah, I'm trying to get my clothes black, but they just keep turning out all gray. Gee, Val, haven't you heard of Gothic? Gothic? It's the detergent in the black box. Look! <laughs> Crystals! The magnetic power crystals in Gothic make your clothes ultra black. They create a magnetic force field so powerful that light itself cannot escape. How's this for black? Gee, Felicity, how do you get your clothes so black? Have you listened to a word I've said? Gothic, so black it's scary. All right, we'll see you next week, but remember, next Friday, the 13th, stay tuned for Nancy and Tracy Take on the World. And good luck, Mariners, tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>